Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with tools to help you share the Gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. And people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique and so on? Questions that you need that you will face and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the Word of God. We have a section called Identity where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called on how to where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called group study guides where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores Search for All People's Church Bangalore. Download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. Probably uh, some kind of a hunk of a guy because you know that time he had this long hair, uh, hippie kind of look. I always liked her when I met her in college, but never, never proposed to her because maybe because of some ego and all that. I I remember uh, you know the, I mean the first thing I remember is her smile, which is what I like the most. Uh, I had seen him volunteering a lot in. Uh, a church and I really you know recognize that he's a man of God actually I have more weird habits in him. <laughs> I think the way he uses his toothpaste yeah he's very organized and disciplined so that's not weird. Uh, that is not weird well, that's so like, that, it, it's that's like, like the best um, you can expect, right? <laughs> she likes to cut onions and mix chili and salt and eat even though you make the most delicious food and keep it on the table, she'll go and chop onions. I find him to be, you know, kind of too meticulous, which is kind of weird, like, you know, which side you put the towel to dry every every day, you know? I find that kind of weird. There's a, there's a science to it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Obviously her, like, picking up the fight. <laughs> oh, oh, really? I think she's very patient. So normally, even if I pick up a fight, she forgives. He's the first one to pick a fight. And to forgive also, right? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Actually, no, we, we, I think we're mixed, right? Sometimes we do fight, but then one thing is like, we never ever let the sun go down on our anger, you know? Even if though we don't verbally say sorry to each other, uh, at night, we probably just, 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 just a hand over each other or something which just says that, you know, I'm sorry and forgiven each other. Both are equal. Sometimes it's um, it's mom and sometimes it's dad. He's very strict. After they've gone to bed and he like you know gets into their room every night and sometimes I like wonder what what he's doing and then he would go uh, you know into their rooms and I would see him like you know put put his hands over them and pray over them. So I think that's the sweetest dad moment. 
uh, there are times when I'm like, I'm beating myself. I, I ought to do this. I should have done that. And, uh, but then when I look at them, I'm like, I mean, I've got a bigger father. So why worry? So that's one thing which I've learned from the kids. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. On the program today, we are uh, doing a special telecast where we're going to, going to talk about marriage and family. And uh, I have some special guests with us today on the program. Uh, we have uh, Ranjini Isaac here, who has a master's in uh, medical and uh, psychiatric social work. She spent several years in uh, both in medical uh, and psychiatric settings, working with people. Uh, she also uh, has specialized in the area of education and has uh, provided counseling to students, families, uh, both in one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one counseling as well as in uh, group family therapy. I also have Jean George with us who holds a master's degree in uh, psychiatric social work and uh, she began uh, early in her days as a, as a school counselor and uh, she's also uh, spent some time as a development coordinator in a child-centered NGO and uh, uh, as a consultant in a, a medical college hospital here in Bangalore and in the Department of Psychiatry. And uh, currently she runs, has her own private practice, uh, working with a number of corporate uh, people, and training and as, as well as uh, uh, counseling uh, people in that area. So we're delighted to have uh, both of you uh, on the program today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them questions, let them talk to us based on their experience. And, and, the, and the wonderful thing is they are both part of uh, Chrysalis Counseling, which is a, a Ministry of All People's Church. So they are, uh, they've integrated their professional training with solid biblical truths and, and uh, principles and are using it to help people. So we want to talk about marriage and family. And uh, on this episode, we really want to talk about uh, the early phase when, you know, about couples who are getting ready for marriage and... Uh, uh, and, and, and of course, we know that marriage was designed by God. It's meant to be something uh, really uh, uh, good, uh, something that we, you know, we all enjoy and look forward to. Uh, but in this whole preparation phase, uh, in your experience, uh, Ranjani, as you've met with various uh, young couples who are preparing for marriage, uh, what have you observed as uh, you know, common notions or maybe sometimes even misconceptions people that, uh, or assumptions people come with uh, on what marriage is, uh, and that is, you know, sometimes not always in, aligned to a biblical perspective of marriage. So can you speak to us on, on, on that? Thank you, Pastor. I think um, it's very interesting that you said that um, marriage is um, God's idea, and it was designed by Him, and therefore marriage is a good thing. I'd like to begin there, um, but uh, I would also like to say that um, Lately, I mean, we've been going through um, a period of um, uh, years of uh, a lot of pessimism on mm -hmm. the idea of marriage itself. And um, we see a lot of young people for premarital preparation. And uh, we realize that as Christians, we are not immune to this pessimism. And mm -hmm. uh, very often, the people who come for preparation come with kind of mixed ideas and mixed feelings about uh, uh, the idea of marriage itself and very often it is um, to do with um, you know marriage is looked at as a 50-50 uh, contractual kind of arrangement okay. um, where um, each one promises to hold their end as long as the other one holds theirs um, and that's really not what the Bible has taught us and we, we know that the marriage that is from the Bible what God designed is a 100% um, covenant um, promise of unconditional love. Mm. Um, not only at the time of marriage, uh, where they love each other or commit to love each other, but also that they will love each other in the future. Right. Uh, so in that sense, I feel uh, even our Christian youngsters are really at the shallow end of uh, the understanding of uh, a biblical marriage. Mm. Did you want to add something to that or no? What you've observed in your uh, working with young people? Yeah, uh, even as Ranjani was talking about uh, how marriage is God's design. Uh, so when we look at the Bible, it does talk about how God uh, is the one 
who is the center of every marriage. But what we've noticed, even as we talk to young people, is that they look for a partner to fill the void uh, that they may be experiencing. Mm. So they hope that marriage will fill the void that they, that they have inside of them. Um, but but what, we, what we know of the Bible is that oneness does not come when you find a missing piece to fit you in. But wholeness comes when Christ is a part of that marriage. Mm. And uh, more than looking for the partner to uh, fit you, it is to look as to how the partner, uh, how Christ can complete uh, the partner. Mm. Uh, so marriage is absolutely a glorious reality, but it is definitely secondary to uh, the spiritual identity that the couples have in there as children of God. Mm. So looking for the person not to complete them, but for God to complete them is, is something that we have uh, seen young people have an idea of. And mm. we, we kind of uh, bring them to that understanding that the Christ is the one that can only complete us as people in right, marriage. Right, right. So um, having to deal with uh, maybe, you know, like a, a pessimistic approach, uh, maybe something that's very contractual, a 50-50 rather than a 100% commitment to this, knowing that, you know, God has actually ordained that. Also like uh, learning to uh, derive our identity from who we are in, in Christ himself and then coming with that into marriage. And, so I think these are very, very important uh, shifts that people need to, uh, young people need to have as, as they approach marriage. Now, uh, so, you know, if you were to, you know, uh, just look at uh, this, uh, you know, what would be the uh, three most important um, uh, ingredients, you know, uh, that go into making a strong marriage? And suppose you were to sit, you know, with a young couple and say, you know, who are considering marriage, and you were to tell them, look, you know, these are the three things that you really need to have for a strong marriage? I mean, what would those three things be? Anyone can go ahead on that. Yeah, like uh, Jean rightly said, I think your personal relationship with God is the foremost thing, right. not just for your marital relationship, for, but for any other relationship as well. So that is really the foundation of your life. If you look at marriage, then I would think that um, uh, being other-centered, in the sense is moving away from yourself mm. to the other person and putting the other person ahead of you, right. above you, um, like it, that's, the, well, that's what the Word of God tells right. us, that you need to value the person above yourself. I think that is uh, very important. And if you were to ask me, I mean, uh, this is something so ideal, how can I do it? Because mm. by nature, we are all self-centered. Um, and I believe that um, if you are connected to the power that God is, uh, makes available to you, mm. the working of the Holy Spirit, uh, the other-centeredness uh, comes very uh, automatically. It's a struggle. Uh, but I think that is a very important uh, ingredient in marriage. Right. Right. So having, um, first of all, that personal relationship with God and then uh, being the other-centered. So I think, I think that's so much what you know, the Bible teaches us in Philippians 2. It says, you know, let no man just seek their own interests, but let them look out for the interests of the others. And so, uh, Jin, do you want to add anything else to that? I mean, in, in, if you were to talk to young people and say, you know, these are three ingredients, uh, would you add to what Ranjini has uh, shared on that? I totally um, second Ranjini's first point on Christ needing to be the center. Uh, along with that, I think it's also communication that glues uh, a marriage together. So it's just not communication. I think it's conscious communication mm. where the couples are intentional about understanding, about expressing, about listening, mm. um, about being able to um, uh, look at the other's viewpoint. So co unless there is communication, it, marriage ca can be difficult. An additional point, uh, as I see, which is central in the gospel is forgiveness mm. because there is uh, there is hurt, there is uh, um, pain that flies around right. and if these things are not unresolved, it stays in the mind as convictions and attitudes uh, which can uh, bring downfall to a marriage. Mm. So forgiveness is something that uh, couples need to come uh, to an understand, just like how God forgave us for, for our sins. Right. It's a model that Christ uh, showed. And that's something that I think is very key in mm -hmm. having a marriage that, that sustains over years uh, right, together. Right. Yeah. yeah, so there's a, a very interesting insight. So, uh, you know, as young people, 
you know, be prepared. I mean, young people take a lot of time to prepare for all kinds of things in life. You know, go to college and, you know, all kinds of training for their uh, professional lives. So, uh, similarly, if, if, you know, what can young people do to prepare themselves uh, in view of these, these, you know, these ingredients that we, we understand are very important, you know, our personal relationship with God, uh, being uh, other-centered rather than being self-centered, communication, the uh, learning, having, developing the ability to forgive and, and, and you know, go past things. Uh, how can young people prepare themselves and, or at least develop these or maybe other skills that are needed uh, for a strong marriage? Uh, what would you recommend? I think, uh, Pastor, I should mention that the young people are always looking for uh, the perfect person or the, the, the right person, as you would say. And very often the search is too long sometimes um, because they really feel this person is not the right person. And, that person is, they are probably looking for some traits in the other person which they lack or they would like to have or like to see in another person. I would say that um, uh, during this period of waiting or preparation, if every young person would start looking within and see how he or she is, uh, gets into a place of readiness for this relationship. In terms of uh, simple things like, you know, being emotionally mature, Mm. knowing exactly how you deal with your emotions, what, are you, what is the center of your life, mm. uh, where is your identity, mm. uh, what is it that really um, makes you secure, mm. um, what is it that gives you self-worth, right. uh, what is the meaning and purpose of your own life. If they start looking at these things and start looking within, mm. um, it would be a good preparation before they start a relationship with another person. So I think, um, one most important thing for me is every young person should really find their identity in Christ, mm. um, which is where the fullness of life starts. And then they are that much more able to, you know, share their life with another person. And that would be a very important point of preparation right. for marriage. Yeah. I think in addition uh, to what Ranjani also spoke about, uh, especially when we do our premarital preparation course with, uh, with young couples, uh, we get them to uh, assess their levels of communication, assess their levels of emotional development, mm. uh, how financially strong are they, uh, different areas where they come to a point to understand where they stand. Mm. And once uh, they are able to come to an evaluation, then we kind of bring out what really God expects in different areas of marriage, like in communication, what does God really expect? Mm. Uh, or in resolving a conflict, uh, what does God expect? So we kind of help them uh, to see beyond what they have been to, to something that God has designed in mm. different areas of marriage. Uh, so through the process of uh, uh, the premarital preparation, we give them some exercises to mm. help them to communicate. So if they've had a conflict, we kind of run them through the ways that they have resolved the conflict. Right. And we kind of help them through what really God expects. Mm. So, uh, so they, they go back uh, trying the new principles, trying the, the truths that are there in the Bible, coming back really enriched to mm. know that, you know, some of these uh, truths can be applied into their lives even as they prepare right. uh, in marriage. Yeah, very good. I think, I hope, you know, uh, young people, those of you are watching the program, uh, that you would take these things that we're we talking really to heart. You know, just as, you know, we, we spend so much time preparing for various things in life, I think it's so important to prepare for marriage rather than just, you know, waiting to find the right person, as Ranjini was saying, you find Mr. or Miss Right, and, and, and then you say, okay, that's all. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole preparation that you can uh, uh, take time to uh, and, uh, you know, work on some of these things. You're just coming to a place of uh, security, finding your security significance and your, your self worth in your identity in Jesus. Uh, developing you know, proper communication skills, uh, how do you resolve conflict. And, and th we just want to encourage young people uh, to work on these things and try to be the best you that you can be uh, for, uh, you know, for your marriage. Let's try to address another question here. Hopefully we'll have time for that. Is, you know, uh, let's say there are two young people who are going through their premarital period. Uh, maybe they're engaged and you know, just getting to know each other. And, uh, and, you know, the wedding date is, you know, up, up in the future, maybe six months or, you know, several months up ahead, but they're just getting to know each other. And uh, during this time, um, you know, of course, as they get to know each other, there would, there would be certain warning signs and uh, things that, that kind of tell us that, you know, 
you need to weigh it. So you need to resolve those issues. I think uh, one important thing that we'd like also to leave with our, those of viewing is, look, it's better to resolve problems before marriage than wait till after marriage and then try to resolve it. So if, could you talk to us about those warning signs, which you know, uh, either the, you know, the boy or the girl need to be uh, on the lookout for, and how can they receive help? You know, suppose they see something uh, that isn't right. What should they do rather than just close their eyes, pretend everything is okay and go and get married and then get into trouble? You know, what would you say? What, what should they do? What signs should they look for? How should they reach out for help? And uh, yeah, any thoughts on that? I think the courtship is the very hardest time to find out negatives because we are always putting up our best side. Right. And uh, even if you know each other for a long time, you know, you, you try to um, be someone who you really not are at that point of time. So it's, it's important, otherwise, even otherwise, to pick up these uh, little things um, in terms of, you know, emotional maturity, um, readiness to, um, for life in terms of having a job and uh, being able to manage uh, a family. Right. And, uh, little things like that, which uh, which will probably uh, become apparent in your interaction with each other. Mm. You know, uh, for example, I had this uh, couple with me who um, seemed very much in love. They knew each other for about eight years, wow. and they thought they said uh, this. We have done this after much thought, and we've uh, uh, you know walked this path for a long time. And I feel we should be we are ready to get married. But when we were going through the preparation, um, a whole lot of things started surfacing, uh, mainly in terms of um, families and their reaction to the extended family, who should do what and what mm. is allowed, you know, kind of thing. Then I realized that there was a lot of uh, uh, immaturity in terms of emotional, um, you know, levels in mm. both of them in the way they were handling those issues. But they never ever brought it up because they thought this is something we can always deal with later. And it actually came to a point where we had to go into a conflict resolution about the whole thing and we walked that path of going through the seven steps and mm. um, they reached a point when they had to take time off and you know work on that, come back and then resolve that issue in, uh, peacefully. So I think it's very important to pick on these things that uh, may not be visibly there, mm. but um, as, as, as counsellors we see this uh, between the lines and uh, we try to help them uh, move forward only if they are ready to do this. Jane, you want to say anything more on that? The saying that says marriage is just not between two people but between two families mm. uh, and we've I think some of the warning signs that uh, young people need to look at is uh, what is the control and the dependency that uh, a man or a woman would have towards their parents. So the, the design God gives in marriage is to leave and to cleave. Mm. But often we find that young people still, cle le uh, still do not leave their parents in the sense of they are extremely emotionally dependent or financially dependent or dependent on decisions. So the parents do have a say mm. within everything that comes within uh, this new family, which can cause a lot of turbulence within the relationship. So mm. right from the time of courtship, even at the planning of the wedding, there are times that uh, young couples see uh, parents holding a strong control uh, over decisions that the couple can generally make right. or uh, the one of the partners become really dependent on the decisions that the parents need to uh, mm. parents have have on on different aspects of the marriage so that is again a warning sign because mm. uh, in marriage if it is there at courtship uh, it is most likely that it can continue right. even after marriage unless uh, something is done about it unless uh, you know the entire family can come in together and mm. have uh, boundaries that are placed uh, mm. for a, a, for a newlywed. So we see that even parental control and dependency could also be something young people need to look out for. Right. Right. Okay, I think we are um, out of time today, uh, but thank you so much for those insights, and I hope that those watching, you know, you are able to take some of these things and begin to think about it. You know, marriage was designed by God, it, was it has been instituted by God, it's something to be held in honor. But like we heard today, it's so important for young people uh, to really prepare well for marriage. Take time to prepare and, and to make yourself um, 
the best person that you can be, uh, deal with issues and problems uh, before you get married, uh, so that when you do get married, you can really establish the home and the family that God wants you to have and something that's truly filled uh, with His righteousness, peace, and joy. You want to take a few minutes to pray uh, before we close the program. So uh, I really want to pray, for, especially for those young people uh, who are you know, looking forward to marriage. I want to pray over your lives. And uh, Gina and Raji will agree with me as we pray together for you. Uh, and we believe God's wisdom, grace, and provision uh, for your life. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we just thank you so much uh, for this time just to talk about things that, uh, that can help us, Father, uh, to prepare for marriage, for what you've instituted. And Father, right now we pray for young people who have been watching, listening. Father, we pray for your grace, your wisdom upon them. We pray, God, that you'll open their eyes, give them understanding, give them knowledge, what they need to do to prepare well, to have a happy and a blessed marriage and family, the kind of home that you would want them to have. We pray for this wisdom upon them. And Lord, we pray you will help them to make the right choice, the right decisions. And Lord, to journey into this, to experience your riches, your highest, your best for their lives. We thank you, O God. We pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We have a publication called Marriage and Family. Uh, it's a, a very comprehensive book that starts from the very beginning of what marriage is. How do you go about preparing for marriage? How do you find your life partner? And then moving on into uh, essential ingredients that are necessary for building a strong marriage, uh, resolving conflicts, communication, uh, learning to put the past behind. We talk about things like uh, running your family, uh, personal finances, budgeting, and so on. And then we move on to talk a little bit about uh, parenting and so on and how to pray for your children. Uh, so this book is, uh, is, is a very important, very useful, and very concise. 